Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a complementary color scheme in your photos using Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about the complementary colour scheme and how to create one in Photoshop. So when you take a photo you might notice that certain colours work well together and these are what you call colour schemes. So there are quite a few out there but the most popular one is the complementary colour scheme. This is regarding colours that are opposite or opposing on the colour wheel. So if you go ahead and look at the colour wheel you can see that there are colours all the way around in a 360. But all we need to do is select a colour, so for instance let's select green, and simply draw a line on the other side of the colour wheel. And that is what your complementary colour would be in a photo. And you can try and find this in natural environments, such as for instance if we take the sand and we take the blue sea, they work really well together. But you might not necessarily be able to find the complementary colour in the photo that you've taken. So what we can do today, or this is what we're going to be discussing, is how to create a complementary colour scheme by adapting colours in your photos. And I'm going to be using a few photos that I've just taken on one of my automotive shoots. So without further ado guys, let's get started. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose any photo. But if you would like to use the same photo that I'm going to be using, the link will be in the description. So what we want to do is just firstly work out what colours that we want to change. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the photo I'm going to be using today. And we've got this lovely photo of a car that I took last weekend. So as you can see, we've got green and we've also got blue of the car. So I don't want to necessarily change the blue of the car because that's the, the customer's car and I don't necessarily want to change that. So we want to change or adapt the other colour which will be green. So as we've got this lovely cyan, we'll need to find the opposite of cyan to create the complementary look. So what I've done is I've just go ahead and just downloaded a nice and easy uh, colour wheel to look at. And what we want to do is just work out the opposite. So at the moment, I'm looking at the cyan. So all we need to do is just work out what's the opposite of cyan. So we'll choose cyan and we'll just simply draw a line all the way to the opposite. And you can see it's this kind of orangey red colour. So that's the colour that we'll need to create in Photoshop. So if we go ahead and back to Photoshop, we can see that this yellow color, it needs to be, or the green color needs to be changed into more of an orange. So all we need to do is just use two adjustment layers to change this. And again, it works with any color. So for instance, if you wanna keep the green, but change the cyan, all you'll need to do is just go back to your color wheel, work out where green is, and you just want to create maybe more of a magenta car, for instance. Or again, you can change it and adapt it to anything of your choice. But just remember, use the color wheel and they need to be opposites. And they can be different amounts as well. They don't have to be exactly 50% green and 50% magenta. It could be 95% green and only 5% magenta. The balance doesn't really matter. But as long as the two colors are the secondary and primary colors in the shot, then it doesn't really matter the amount. Uh, so that's quite important to mention. So what we need to do is just simply change these kind of greens to more of an orange. And we can do this by creating two simple adjustment layers. So we're gonna go down to our adjustment layers icon and we're gonna go ahead and select hue and saturation. Now what hue and saturation does is it simply finds a color and then you can adapt it using the hue. And again, you've also got the saturation and lightness cider, hence the name HSL, which stands for hue, saturation or luminance. And sometimes it's also called lightness as well. So if we go ahead to our master selection, if we click on that drop down, you can see it drops down to a bunch of color bands. And these are the color bands that we want to adapt because we don't want to change all the colors. We just want to change certain colors. And this is where the drop down comes in really handy. So we'll go ahead and we want to go ahead and select yellow first. Now we were selecting yellow because I find some of the trees has got quite a lot of yellow in it. So all we need to do is simply change the greens into orange and yellows. So we're going to do is you can see they've got orangey on the left hand side. We're going to drag that over to the left. And as you can see, those colors are now starting to change. So we just need to find is work out the balance. And I think minus 35 for this photo looks best. But as you can see, not all of them have changed. So what we just need to do is go into our greens and again, do the exact same thing. Move that until you are happy with the result. And I think probably around minus 45. Lovely. Now, because of the kind of trees in the background are quite dark, we're just going to up the saturation and up the lightness. So I'm going to go back to yellow. I'm just going to up the saturation just ever so slightly. And that brings up the brightness. So let's go for 25. And then we'll also up the brightness by, let's say, 15. And then we'll do the same for green. So we'll up that by 25. So that's the saturation. And then the lightness, we'll up by 15. 
lovely. But the colours aren't really popping, so how can we create the kind of really nice bright colours that we had originally? This is where we can use the selective colour layer, which is a little bit more customizable, but it works just as well as the human saturation. So we go ahead to our adjustment layers icon again, and we're gonna go ahead right to the bottom, we've got selective colour. Now it works almost exactly the same as human saturation, but it's not as uh, dramatic. So it allows you to change certain colours and the values of them. So what we want to do is gonna go ahead to our drop down again. So you can see very similar drop down, but this time we've got a few more colors in here. But we want, again, we just wanna be changing the yellows and greens. Again, if you're working with the same photo, but again, try and find the opposite or opposing color and try and change that to try and create the complementary color scheme. So we'll go ahead and select yellow. And we want to add quite a lot of yellow. So we we'll go to our yellow slider, you can see here, and we're gonna go and up that a little bit. Lovely, and then we want to down cyan in the yellow. So if we do that, and you can see now the colors are really starting to pop. So we'll go for something like so. And again, we just want to copy the exact same for greens. So we've got the greens, we want to down cyans and up yellows. So if we go ahead and reduce the amount of cyan and let's up the amount of yellow there as well. Lovely, and it's really starting to pop. And then in the reds, we've got quite a lot of red here now. So what we need to do is just move the cyan over to the left because obviously cyan is the opposite of red, which again is a complementary color. So what we just need to do is bump up that. And if we go ahead to cyan, so this is the cyan of the car, we can also boost up the cyan a little bit. So we'll go ahead and slide that over to the right. And as you can see, the cyan of the car is popping up really nicely now. And if we go to the blues, again, what's the opposite of blue? Yellow, so just simply decrease the yellow slider. And you can see the colors are really starting to come together and I am really starting to like this photo. Lovely. So there's just a few more things I wanna finish just to kind of really add a little bit of pop to this photo. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast and then I'm gonna add a slight vignette. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to adjustment layers and I'm gonna to go to my brightness and contrast. I'm just gonna up the contrast, let's say by 15%. Lovely, that's added a little bit more drama, drama to the photo. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a, let's add a gradient. And then let's add a nice simple gradient, so a black to uh, white. And then I'm gonna add a radial vignette and I'm just gonna flip that vignette nice and easy, so do the reverse. And then I'm just gonna make it ever so slightly larger. Lovely. So I'll go for something like that. And then all I'm gonna do is just simply drop, drop the opacity because it's a little bit too strong. And then I'll probably change that to multiply. Lovely. So I'm really starting to like this photo. It's just a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna go into our brightness and contrast layer and I'm gonna up that contrast, uh, or up the brightness just ever so slightly to match the contrast there. So they're both on 15. Lovely. So if we go ahead and just save all of that into a group. So select your first layer here. So that's your gradient, your bottom layer, which is the hue and saturation. And all we need to do to create it into a single group is just press Command G. And that will group all of those layers into a single layer. And if we go ahead to that group, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna name those edits so I can just do show you the before and after. So if you do the before, and if we do the after, I am really happy with the results and it really creates this really cool, kind of almost uh, complimentary, but it's almost this high contrast look, which really works well with certain photos. And again, all you need to do is just work out what color you want to change and what color you want to save, and then just create a complementary color from that. So if we go back to the color wheel, all you'll need to do, so for instance, I used cyan and red, but again, you can always do, for instance, blue and yellow, or for instance, magenta and green, and then again, you've got so many colors out there. So find a color that you wanna keep, find a color that you want to change, and then just simply create a complementary color scheme from that. And there we go, guys. Brilliant. And there we go, guys. So that's how you can create a complementary color scheme in your photos. And I must say, it does make your photos look a lot more appealing and it really does pop out. And if you want to have a look at any of the photos that I've edited, they'll be available on my automotive page on my Instagram account. And I'll make sure to link the link in the description. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content and become part of the notification squad. But until next time, guys, keep creating.